Incredible story of U.S. pilot pushing a damaged fighter plane out of danger. It was an ominous day on March 10, 1967. Sitting in two F-4 Phantoms, the four American fighter pilots awaited their takeoff orders. Their mission was to bomb a strategic target in Thai Nien, 30 miles north of Hanoi, a city located in northern Vietnam and heavily guarded by enemy forces. It was one of their most dangerous missions they had ever flown in Vietnam, and also it was their destiny to soon become legends, among the fighter pilot aces. The target was the enemy's only steel mill, for the production of essential war material, and was therefore well protected by enemy planes, anti-aircraft's artillery, and the strong presence of Viet Cong ground forces. It's no doubt that this was an almost impossible mission, as the area was the best protected in Vietnam, with the highest density of the enemy forces. For almost two weeks, the mission had been postponed because of heavy monsoons, thunderstorms, and low clouds over the clustered hills that surrounded the target. As all of the previous attempts failed due to bad weather, it would seem that the target is a God-protected place, forcing the every American strike force to turn back. However, on March 10, 1967, the skies were clear, and this time, there would be no turning back for the two F-4 Phantoms. Captain Earl Lamont with co-pilot Robert Houghton in one aircraft and Captain Robert Pardo with his co-pilot Steve Wayne in the other had carefully conducted the pre-flight control and once again went through the mission details with the updated report of enemy activities. U.S. intelligence estimated that the Tai Nien would be defended by both Soviet MiGs and extra anti-aircraft guns. Captain Amon was concerned about the intelligence report as the enemy was quite expecting their attack. He also later confessed that this was the first mission in which he was worried about getting shot down even before they took off. By realizing that this was probably one of the most important targets of their entire Air Force's careers, pilots decided not to step back and proceed with the mission. With planes ready and fully loaded with bombs, both pilots were nervously waiting to take off. They knew that this job is going to be tougher than any they've ever faced, and with no additional support, they can only rely on each other. The takeoff order finally came, and the strike force was airborne. Over the course of the strike, both Amon's and Pardo's F-4s were soon riddled with anti-aircraft shells that blackened the skies with deadly flak. Before they even got close to the target, the F-4 Phantom of Captain Amon's was hit by a North Vietnamese anti-aircraft shell, but he managed to stay in formation, and the crew escaped injury. However, the enemy round had damaged the plane, causing the difficult maneuvering and vibrations of the aircraft. Pilots then immediately checked their instruments and discussed whether or not to return back or proceed on to the target. As their damaged fighter plane appeared flyable, and despite the heavy anti-aircraft fire, the Captain Amon decided to continue with their mission. After a few minutes later, both Phantoms finally reached the target. Amon and Pardo nosed their plane down through the enemy fire and dropped their bombs on the Tai Nien steel mill. During their air raids, Amon's plane takes two more hits and was heavily damaged by anti-aircraft artillery. The first had badly damaged plane fuel tank, and it was now losing fuel fast. Pardo's plane also had been hit when they made their own air raid on the steel mill. As they approached and attacked the target, their plane was hit by enemy artillery round in the fuselage after the pilot's seat. Bright warning lights flashed on Pardo's instrument panel, alerting him that the plane was badly damaged. It was a critical situation, as the Pardo's plane lost electrical power and began losing fuel. Miraculously though, his Phantom was still handling normally. After the successful attack, both pilots radioed their situation to the Air Force Command Center, which then set a course for them back to safety and toward the in-flight refueling point, where they were supposed to connect with the tanker aircraft. However, the heavily damaged Amon's Phantom was losing fuel so fast, it could not possibly reach the tanker or even make it back to the US-controlled area. Amon had no alternative. Together with his co-pilot, they had to eject. Still over the enemy territory north of Hanoi, they prepared to bail out. If they punched out over North Vietnam, they were almost certain to be captured and either killed or sent to reserve camps, where they would starve to death. To avoid having Amon and Houghton bail out over hostile territory, Pardo suggested an outlandish idea. He'd use his own Phantom to literally push the crippled Amon's F-4 to safety, after which the crew of the damaged aircraft could punch out and await rescue. Pardo's initial plan was to snug the nose of his F-4 against the tail of Amon's so he could use the thrust of his jet engines to propel both stricken airplanes to the Laotian jungle, where rescue was a safer option. 
Pardo told Amon to jettison his tail parachute in order to open a good push point at the rear end of Amon's fuselage. Basically, he tried pushing the plane using drag chute compartment, but heavy turbulence coming off Amon's airplane prevented from making any contact. Although his comrades in the front fighter were now convinced there was no choice but to bail out in enemy territory. By this point, Amon's F-4 was descending at a rate of 3,000 feet a minute and it would soon crash into the Vietnamese jungle, but Pardo would not give up. He came up with another brilliant idea as he spotted the tail hook at the rear end of Amon's fuselage. Pardo radioed seemingly impossible instructions to Amon, drop your tail hook and we'll push you out of here. What Pardo was planning to do had never been tried. The Phantom, having been originally designed as a naval aircraft for the US Navy and US Marine Corps, was equipped with a heavy duty tail hook for landings aboard aircraft carriers and for emergency arrestments ashore. Amon lowered his tail hook and Pardo moved behind Amon until the tail hook was against Pardo's windscreen. Pardo placed the tail end of the hook's steel rod against his windscreen and started pushing. It worked, but about every 30 seconds, Pardo would lose contact because of turbulence, then back off and come in again. It was an extraordinary job of flying. Amon's rate of descent was reduced to 1,500 feet per minute. To make matters worse, the pressure of the tail hook against Pardo's windscreen produced ominous spider web like cracks in the glass, so Pardo repositioned the tail hook against a section of metal at the base of the glass. Their problems were not over. Pardo's left engine caught fire. Its temperature had increased from the normal 600 degrees Celsius to 1000 degrees. That meant there was an uncontrolled internal flame that might detonate the engine and quite possibly the entire aircraft. Pardo tried to restart the engine. However, the risk of explosion was so high that he decided to shut down the engine completely. By now, the rate of descent was up to 2,000 feet per minute again, with only one live engine for both planes. Miraculously, for another 10 minutes, both Phantoms kept flying and Pardo's plane managed to push him on with only the one remaining engine, eventually reaching Laos. Unfortunately, Pardo's plane was also running out of fuel and the four American pilots knew they would have to bail out. Across the Black River, near the Laotian border, they radioed their position to the air search and rescue crews. When North Vietnam passed out of sight, Amon and his co-pilot Houghton immediately ejected. Pardo's right engine, starved of fuel, flamed out a few minutes later, and he and his co-pilot Wayne ejected as well. The four aviators reunited on the ground and made their way to safety, avoiding Laotian communist militia. They were picked up by rescue helicopters less than two hours after touching down. Bob Pardo was an instant hero to the other pilots, but ironically, the US Air Force was so sensitive to combat losses during the war that Pardo was actually reprimanded for the loss of his Phantom. Good judgment prevailed, and the charges were dropped. There's no doubt that the daring plans saved Amon and his co-pilot Houghton from capture. All four airmen received long overdue recognition. Pardo was awarded the Silver Star for what came to be known as Pardo's Push that lasted for about 20 minutes and carried both jets 80 miles, far enough for a safe rescue. Pardo and Amon eventually completed their Air Force careers, both retiring in the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Pardo's push was later the subject of an episode of JAG, True Callings. The episode's credits saluted Pardo for his courage and ingenuity. Using his own windscreen to support the hook, Pardo drove his wingman's broken phantom for 20 minutes, eventually reaching Laos, 80 miles away.